Welcome to My Long Island TV. From Manhasset to Montauk, we've traveled our communities to bring you the following events. I'm your host, Waldo Cabrera. My Long Island TV starts now. Safety Swim's reasoning for being open and, and for the last 34 years is, is that it's not just to learn to swim, it's to be, become safer in and around the water at all times. The way we always say it is everything happens and you take care of things after. It's like having an alarm in your house. What do you do? You get broken into and then you put the alarm in. So that's just the same type of thing. Educate your family, educate your, your children, and learn and take the necessary steps to be safer. We basically want to do an inspection of the home and see what we need to do to make the pool safer, make the house safer for the family and the children that are here. Well, step one is obviously protecting your pool. And what they actually have done is put a, a removable mesh fencing in here, four feet high. And the most important thing is that it has a, an entry point, which is what we call a self-closing, self-latching gate. You pull it up, you pull out towards you, and then you walk through it, and it closes automatically behind you. If a child were to take a chair, they will try to put the chair here, and they're gonna to wanna to try to lift up on it. They, they're quick learners, and they're gonna to wanna to try to get in, but look, they can't if this is in the way and it's opening outward. If you're gonna remove this fence, it's not you should, you must have a lifeguard or an actual uh, water watcher. We actually offer a water watcher tag that you can get off of our website and that water watcher tag can actually be shared for 20 minutes at a time. One of the things that is required by law is to have an alarm that is installed in the pool that senses motion. So when you're not utilizing the pool, and it puts off an audible alarm, it also puts an audible alarm over at the uh, point of the remote is that's inside the house, get out to the pool right away. You never want to jump in after somebody that's in, in need of help, because instead of having one person possibly in trouble, you could have two or more in trouble. You want to either throw something that can float, that somebody can grab onto, or you could reach something to them. One of the life rings that we actually recommend would be one that has actually a rope on it. So we'd put the end in with it has the buoy on it, and you would step on it, and then you would throw this out. You're gonna either sit down or lay down on your tummy and pull it in until they get to the side. And then we make sure we grab their hand and make sure they hold on to the wall until help gets here. All right, I could take that ball, I could throw that and float until help comes. You could do two things with a pool noodle. I could throw the pool noodle out and it's gonna float. Or we could actually use this as an item that you could reach to, pull them in, let them grab onto it and pull them back to the side and hold on to the side that way. Life jackets are for people that do not know how to swim in a pool, in a lake, any kind of body of water but they also can be used as a rescue piece of equipment. We all have the skimmers that we use to clean leaves out with, and we can grab that, that potential victim and pull them in. If you look across the pool over there, you'll see a, a shepherd's hook. It's 16 feet long. You're cleaning up for the day, and, and we're now shutting the pool down. We gotta make sure that we remove everything that can be an attraction for a child or somebody to want to get to. We have a couple of different rafts and floaties that are actually in this particular pool area right here. Those I would recommend to the homeowner to put away or put in the shed or put in the garage or even put up on the deck. We're over here now at the diving board and we have a toy right here on the diving board. He's gonna come up here, he's gonna wanna you know, hang out, look at the water and he might fall in just because this is here. So now we're in the front yard of the house. Okay, we're gonna to look to access the back of the yard. We wanna make sure that this gate, it's self-closing, self-latching. We go through it, does it close behind us when we're done? And it does. Believe it or not, 77% of drownings for children under the age of five happen at a home or residential pool. Always look for the pool first if the child's missing and to have interior door locks that are 54 inches or higher and a chime on the door so if they do get by the door lock and they open the door, if you forgot to lock the door, they open up the slider that an alarm goes off in the house or a chime goes off in the house so you know somebody opened up the slider and is now possibly in the backyard. You've done an amazing job. You have some of your safety equipment, including your life ring, your life jacket, and your shepherd's hook. Um, but there were a couple of things that we noticed that you could possibly do a little different. Uh, we noticed a toy up on the, on the diving board, some of your rafts, and some of your things that might be an attraction to a child. Didn't even notice that that would be something dangerous. Um, but we do try to keep them. We put the, the swimmies on them when they're out here. We try to stay around them at all times when they're in the backyard, but never know. That's why we do all this. I got the fence, got an alarm, as much as I could.